Hello there, and welcome to Homeschooling Adventures. My name is P.J. Rahul. Now, in this, today's video, we are going to be looking at the supplier relationships involving complements. So, we are going to be looking at complements on supply. Now, what we need to understand is, when we talk about a complement, a complement are those goods that are produced together at the same time. Now, in a, in, in a, in a real sense, it would mean that when a price of a product A increases, it results in an increase in the supply or in the quantity that is being supplied of product B. For example, if we look at uh, mutton and uh, wool, for example, you would now understand that if the price of mutton, which is the, the uh, sheep meat, if the price of mutton increases, then it would mean that the, uh, the, the supply for mutton is going to increase. And if the supply for mutton increases, then it consequently results in an increase in the production of wool. The amount of wool that is going to be provided is also going to increase. So our example that we are going to be looking at, we are going to be, I am going to be in principle, going to be looking at the mutton and wool. Okay? Now, this is what you need to understand. In general, products that are complements are those products that when the price of one product increases, the quantity supplied of the other product is also increases. Okay? In other words, if the price of one product increases, then the quantity of the other product is also going to increase. And if that happens, then it means these products are said to be complements on supply. Why is that so? Let's start by looking at our law of supply. Our law of supply states that at high prices, suppliers supply more. And at low prices, suppliers are going to supply less. Okay? So when the price goes up, the quantity that is going to be supplied is also going to go up. Okay? And if it is a complement, when price of product X goes up, then it means the quantity of product Y that is going to be supplied also goes up. Okay? So it can be explained using a graph. And these are the graphs that we are going to be looking at. We would now understand that on my graphs here, probably I have this side is the price and this one is the quantity that is being supplied and this one is my origin. Then if I take this to be the normal supply, supply curve and the demand curve, then this one I will uh, take it to be our equilibrium point. And at equilibrium point, probably we are producing 20 and the quantities that are the price is going to be at 15 rents. Okay, this one I'm going to take this to be matter. Okay, to be matter. Okay, that's the, 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 the uh, this what this graph is representing. And then on the other hand, I'm also going to look at uh, this one is the price, that one is the quantity, this one is the origin, and then I'm going to say this one is my supply curve, this one is my demand curve. Okay, and then I'm going to look at this as wool. Okay, now uh, and this one is my equilibrium, and at equilibrium, probably we were producing uh, 25, and maybe the price was uh, maybe 10 minutes. Okay, now back to this. So it would now mean that when the price of matching goes up, when the price of matching goes up, then it would now mean that we are going to have the supplier supplying more of this, okay? Because the price has gone up from probably 15 to maybe 20, then it would mean that the quantity that is being supplied is going to increase from our, from our 20 probably to 30. Okay, why is this increased? It has increased because we are saying the price of uh, of uh, matching as meat has gone up per kilo. So because it has gone up, then it means more farmers are going to produce more of those. More people are going to uh, keep more sheep so that they will be able to produce more matching. Okay, and in the process, they are also going to end up resulting in uh, an increase in the quantity that is being supplied. Now, this is what will happen. If the price of matching goes up, then it means the quantity that is being supplied of wool is also going to go up because these products are taken to be, to be complements. 
So it would mean that the supply of wool is also going to shift to the right. Okay, forming a new supply curve that I'm going to call S1. Okay, and at S1, this is what has happened. The price of wool has remained unchanged at 10 rands, but it would now mean that the quantity of wool that is going to be supplied now is going to increase to 40. Okay, so this is what happens when we are looking at an increase in price when, sub, when products are uh, complements on supply. If the price increases, then it means quantity that is going to be supplied of that particular product, in this case margin, is going to increase. If that happens, then it means even the quantity of the complement is also going to increase though the price of the complement has remained unchanged. And then the same thing can also happen that with the price of the margin can go down. If the price of margin goes down from 15 where it was originally, probably down to 10, okay? It would mean that the quantity that is going to be supplied, this is my supply curve, so the quantity that is going to be supplied is going to go down from a 20 to probably uh, 15. Okay? If this happens, why has this happened? It has happened because when the price is reduced, it has reduced what the quantity that is being supplied. And if the quantity that is being supplied goes down, it would now mean that consequently, we are also going to have even the quantity of the complement also going down, which means the supply curve for the complement is going to shift to the, to the left, okay? Forming a new supply curve that I'm going to call S2. Forming a new supply curve S2. Now, the price of the complement did not change. The price of the complement has remained at 10 rents. So, because the price has not changed, it would now mean that even we now realize that the quantity that is going to be supplied of the complement is going to go down from 25 probably to 10. Now, why is this so? It is because the price of the complement is going down, so it means the quantity of the complement that we had in this context, wool, is also going to go down. So this is what happens, and this is what you now need to remember. When we are dealing with the complements on supply, when the price of one complement goes up, the quantity supplied of the other one goes up, okay? When the price of one good goes down, then the quantity supplied of the other complement goes down, okay? So this is what uh, characterizes complements, okay? When the price increases, then it means the supply curve is going to shift to the right. When the price decreases, then the supply curve is going to shift to the, to the left. Okay, so this is uh, how we deal with complements on supply. Okay, then we are now going to look at um, the complements or the substitutes on supply. Okay, now if it is a substitute, then what it would now mean is, if it is a substitute, then it would mean that these are goods that are used to replace each other. In other words, when you talk about substitutes are learners, you do need to recall that in substitutes are goods that replace each other, okay? In other words, by producing this product, we are going to do it at the expense of the other. Now, this is what you need to remember. Remember, we have a problem of scarcity, which means we are not able to produce all products at the same time. It would now mean that we need to repurpose the resources from the production of product X and produce product Y, okay? So what this is what would happen. Remember, our law of supply still states that at high prices, suppliers are going to supply more and at low prices, suppliers are going to supply less. So that would now mean that if we are looking at suppliers, they are going to produce those products that give them the highest profit. Okay, this one is my demand curve, my supply, my supply, my demand, and this one is my equilibrium. And then at this equilibrium, probably it was 25, and probably the price was a 10. And then in this context, we have our demand, we have our supply, our demand, we have our supply, then equilibrium, and then at this point, maybe it was 25, 
and then we were producing at a price of 20. Now, when the price goes up, okay, and maybe an example of some, some, uh, uh, such substitutes is probably we are looking at tea and coffee, okay, substitute on supply. We are looking at probably tea and coffee, or we are looking at maize and wheat, or maize and rice, okay, if we are going to use those on the same piece of land. So it would now mean that in this case, maybe we are looking at uh, tea and coffee. Okay, so what we are saying now is if the price of coffee goes up, if the price of coffee goes up from 20 rands, probably increases to 30 rands, if the price increases from 20 to 30, what it will do is it's going to force the supply to also increase from 25 probably to 35, okay? And this will now mean that we now probably have a new equilibrium there. But this is what he has said. If the price of coffee goes up from 20 to 30, it would now mean that the quantity that is being supplied is also going to increase from 25 to 35. Why? Because suppliers are going to produce products that give them maximum profit where there is more money. That's what they are going to produce. So in this case, there is now an opportunity for them to make more money in making cups of coffee than in making tea. So what they will do now is they are going to use all their resources. Let's assume that the resources that are used to produce tea are the same resources that are used to produce coffee. So it would now mean that they will move all resources, including the human capital, from the production of tea into production of coffee, including even the financial resources. They will stop ordering tea bags and they will start ordering coffee beans, coffee, coffee beans so that they can be able to make coffee. So this is what we are saying. So they will divert resources from here to here because these products are competing for the same resources. So what it will do now is, because there is an increase in the supply of coffee, it would now mean that the uh, supply for tea is going to end up shifting to the land, forming a new supply curve that we call S1. Okay? Now what is happening with S1? At S1, what has happened? The price of tea is remained unchanged at 10 rands, but they are now going to reduce on the quantity that is being supplied from a 25 probably to a 50. Okay? So this is what is going to happen. Because some of the resources, they are going to move them from the production of tea to the production of coffee. This is what happens when we talk about substitutes on supply or substitutes on production, okay? So we have looked at uh, the relationship that exists between complements on supply and substitutes on supply. Now what we need to understand, we need to remember that when we are talking about substitutes of supply, this happens when an increase in price of products X results in a decrease in the quantity that is produced for product Y. And if it is um, an, a decrease in price for product X, it will result in an increase in the quantity that's produced for product Y, okay? So you need to understand now, like in this context, an increase in price from 20 to 30 on, a, on a, the, the coffee has resulted in a, an increase in the quantity of coffee that is being supplied, which consequently resulted in a decrease in the supply of the substitute product, which in this case is tea bags, is tea, okay? Now, this happens when you are talking about when the price increases. Now, when the price reduces, then this is what will happen. It would mean that when the price reduces, maybe from 20 to 10, then the quantity that is being supplied is going to reduce from our 25, probably to uh, uh, maybe 18. Okay, it will reduce from 25 to 30. Why? Because the price has reduced. It's no longer a profitable for suppliers to continue supplying that product. So what they will do is, these resources that were available here, they are going to end up being channeled to the production of the alternative, where there is a possibility of making more money or maximizing profits. So what it will mean is, we are saying, here it reduces on quantity that is being produced of coffee, but those resources are going to be used to the increase on the supply of um, tea, okay? In this
this case it will shift the supply curve to the right uh, creating a new supply curve that we are going to call S2 okay now what is happening the price of T is remained unchanged but because T now is uh, giving them a possibility of making more money it would now mean that they are going to increase on the quantity that they are supplying of the T uh, from uh, the 25 probably to a 45 Okay, so this is what we now need to understand. Uh, this is generally the supply relationships for both complements and substitutes in a nutshell. All the best in your studies. Good luck. If you like the video, click the like button and remember to subscribe to the channel. All the best. I'm out.